Hello and welcome to the Christmas special episode of the Agile Pubcast. This year, myself, Jeff Watts, Paul Goddard and Nigel Baker got together in Birmingham to celebrate another year and to round it off with a bit of fun. Christmas jumpers on and we started off by talking about drunken estimation. And then we picked up on a question from one of our listeners who asked what we would ask Santa for if we were to write him a letter this year. So settle in with a glass of mulled wine or your favourite Christmas tipple and listen to see what Nigel, Paul and myself were looking for for Christmas this year. Thank you for all your support over the year. It's been great to see the number of listeners go up and up again this year and the comments and interactions have been fantastic. We hope you continue to enjoy what we do and if you want to support us a little bit more please head on over to patreon.com slash the agile podcast where a small monthly subscription can get you access to all sorts of extra goodies, including more episodes of the podcast, some videos and behind the scenes footage and photographs, as well as a few other little things here and there. Anyway, that's enough of me. Let's get back to the pub, the old contemptibles in Birmingham. Hello. Looks good. Set first. Going live. We're live. Hello, Birmingham. We are in action, and we'll see how long it lasts, mm -hmm. and see how much people yes. can hear me Cheers. on this side. Try again. Cheers. Of course, the live thing is trying to pick you up from over there, isn't it? Whereas we've got the yeah. So, audio capture. Oh, so lives from that thing there, is it? Yeah. So it probably won't hear any of us, will it? What it did last time? It picks ah, up. It's quite a good it's long good. range. Of, yeah. It's oh, excellent. Good. Excellent. What are you guys drinking? Mortimer's, isn't it, Nigel? Mortimer's. A lovely, I would say, medium cider, wouldn't you? It's not yeah. a sweet one at all, is it? But it's not doesn't super offend, dry. doesn't offend my sweet tooth, so it's nice. Is that what mine was called, now? Yeah, mine's a middling one. Yours was um, Yarp. 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 And how would you describe yours, Jeff Watts? A little bit citrusy. Okay. And Christmassy, light Christmas theme to it. It's not that Christmassy actually, because I, I I would I would associate spice with Christmas. Mm. So if you had to give spice it a season, which season would you give it? Uh, spring. Ah, <laughs> difficult. I think we should have mulled cider, shouldn't we? We should at some effect. point today. We will do. We should Love. explain where we are and what we're doing. Ah, what are we doing? It's the Christmas day. So this is our annual Christmas jumpers. Christmas jumper. Um, and day out, Christmas day out, day off, day out for Agilify, Agile Bear and Inspect and Adapt. And we are in the old Contemptibles pub in Birmingham. Which, Which has just gone very quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> As everyone realises we're uh, talking to a camera. Yeah, it's um, it's got it's high ceilings. It's, it's I don't know, it's, just, it's got green, dark green, kind of British racing green walls. Yeah. <laughs> It's got but a it, feeling it, that looked like in the olden days it should have been nicotine soaked, but, it's, but obviously not, na just not the now. Just the way it's painted, it it looks and feels like a Chris, like Christmas. Yes, it's like an overly florid Christmas cake yes. cooked by a great auntie but it ready is, for your Christmas. It's making me feel Christmassy just by being in here. Oh, fantastic. Good. It hits the mark. Well picked, Jeff. Jeff picked this pub. It's done. You've chose wisely. Yeah. I picked it based on the name, as I would pick a racehorse in a race. Because old I thought we contemptible. were the old contemptibles. We are the old contemptibles, yes. Yeah. People don't like us, we don't care. <laughs> the so, fans what, what, what I have spotted is this pub seems to be a very popular um, uh, haunt of old alcoholics. <laughs> what makes you say that? Well, <laughs> further down the bar, there's a few older gentlemen who are here drinking quite a lot, quite quickly, quite early. Yeah. Um, so... It seems to be the. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying being an alcoholic is actually bad. I'm just saying if you have to have two pints stacked up, two Guinnesses, and down them in quick succession before midday, that is normally not a sign I heard of. People don't use the term alcoholic anymore. What do they? What term do they use? Drinking problem. Drinking problem. Because you can have a drinking problem without being dependent on alcohol. 
So if you drink for a social crutch, yeah. you have a drinking problem. But you could not have a drink for a long time. But the standard joke is a lot of people, they don't regard themselves yeah. as having a drinking problem. You have a problem with their drinking. They yes. don't have a problem with it. Yes. Have we said where we are in the country? I said Birmingham. You did say that. Yeah, which, is, which is in the Midlands. <laughs> and it's true, because we are actually in Birmingham, thankfully. I think it's technically in the West Midlands, isn't it? I couldn't tell you that. Um, but um, it seems like quite a popular lunchtime kind of drinking, uh, kind of yeah, bus- business pub, would you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of business view. It's in, in an old style, but there's lots of kind of business types in here. Mm-hmm. How are you? Yeah. And, alcoholics. and having an alcoholic drink at lunch, which tends to be frowned upon these days in work. Really? I think so, isn't it? I can't remember. I don't know many offices where... I had someone on... I did a, I did a workshop at a client recently, and they were, they had cans of lager in the class. Yeah, well, that's... In the, on the desk? Well, they were, well, they were, while I was teaching, they were drinking. That's, you see that a lot. And I was at a company, the same company we were talking about. Oh, OK. Um, we won't say where it is, but they have... They, the only appliance they lock in the office is the milk fridge. Yeah. But the alcoholic fridge remains unlocked all day. Because, <laughs> and it's like nobody steals that, but people steal milk, apparently. Okay. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's becoming more popular. Is, is, and again, trying to keep people in the office for longer, I suppose. A social yeah. element, you stay longer, you drink in the evening, as long as you don't break the rules. Yeah. Which are what? Wasn't it? <laughs> Don't code terribly when drunk, I imagine. Well, it, it, it did bring up a conversation about drunken estimation, Arlo Belcher's drunken estimation. Mm. Which is? Do you want to expand on that? Uh, I'll, I'll probably do it a disservice, but so Arlo Belcher is someone who doesn't particularly like estimation as okay. a concept, and while drinking one day with his dad, so I believe, decided to invent an estimation process based on alcoholic drinks, and I think it was something like. If you need to speak to somebody, yeah. then you need a drink because yeah. developers are yeah. naturally inhibited. Yeah. Um, so that would be at least a one pint oh, okay. story. Um, and so if for every group of people you need to speak to, you needed a pint. Okay. If you had to look at a crappy piece of crappy part of the code space, that mm. was another pint. If you had crappy environments, that was another pint. Mm. Um, and, and so on. So you worked out how many pints it was. And if it was above a six pack, then he started talking about it was, it was hard liquor. Yeah. So oh, fifth the whiskey. Right. And so when you get into the, the, the spirits, then you need to break it down. Yeah. So above <laughs> that, you're onto hard drugs. Ah, oh, okay. And so you don't, you, know, yeah. you don't want, you don't want your team on crack. Yeah. Okay. We used to do it in Nokia. We used to have a, crack. No. <laughs> <laughs> That, that explains the whole reason why the product didn't go, you know. I, uh, I rephrase. So they used to do um, a beer-related drink um, estimation. So we, we, we changed, instead of story points, we had story pints. Yeah. Uh-huh. So they accumulated their velocity. I wrote did you? Mm. Probably got it from me, Jeff. Maybe. Um, All my good ideas come from you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they had they accumulated points, and at the end of the end of the sprint, we used to go to the pub and try and drink those pints. Oh wow, that's quite a lot of pints. Well, it depends how productive the sprint was. <laughs> oh, okay. Sometimes it's it would just be three or four deliver, points. Right? Oh man. Incentive to deliver. But yeah, we're not. We on this podcast, we don't. We we encourage responsible drinking. Responsible drinking. Yeah. We have to keep reminding people of that. Yeah. So, yes, there we go. Excellent. So, what's the theme of today's podcast beyond Christmas? Well, we had a suggestion from which, uh, from one of our listeners, Jamie, Jamie Collins. Jamie, Jamie Collins. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. JC, as I call him. <laughs> J Dog. An appropriate name for this time yeah. of year. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Catch up. Catch up. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I, Use I some more crack. Joke. <laughs> I told a joke on one of our courses recently and everybody in the room got it but Paul was sitting there like this <laughs> and then eventually he got it and there it is <laughs> and he drops um, now he suggested what would what would we be writing to Santa for this year agile wise I'm well, assuming well he didn't specify but yeah let's go with that or well, personally I suppose <laughs> yeah okay there's a Okay. Are we, are so we, then begin. Uh, okay. So what do I, what do I write to Santa for? Um, a decent scrum master. There you go. For you. Yeah. 
not for me personally, but just as a as just a one for the world. Yeah, just I've just been running a lot of courses lately where I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm getting a bit tired and a bit, you know, a bit, bit bit forlorn. But near the end of the year. Yeah, and it's just like I seem to be struggling to convince people to motivate, inspire people. Yeah, that there's value in someone like that in a team. I think someone that actually wants to put down what they're doing right now and actually pick up that responsibility. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I really enjoy that. I really enjoy getting more, helping people be better. But we didn't have quite a lot of that about a month ago, now, our ACSM. That was, that was an uplifting day. And that's, that's, that's what I was going to mention earlier, and you told me don't talk about this now because it's, it's potentially good pod, uh, podcast material, but it was about, I think, if anything, this year, what's helped me is the, is the more advanced, is the, the practitioner courses we've been doing, where we've genuinely... I felt I've got I felt a better connection with people on their journey and seeing them actually enjoy doing that role yeah. to doing a scrum master role and say yeah. you know what I'm I believe in this kind of personal growth thing and I actually I'm better off because of it yeah. and I I want to be even better at yeah. it. and that's given me perhaps trying to move away from the yeah the sheep dip of the these the CSM yeah. element yeah. of what we do which is very much trying to just set an education yeah about actually trying to help people grow and I think just a handful of them I won't name them but there's a handful of people that we've worked with that I think have really reinforced my my faith that people actually do want to do it and do want to do it well and so I've kind of gone off the subject there but of Santa's list but if I could have more people like that yeah. you would like more advanced courses no not more advanced courses just more advanced people ah. <laughs> you know more yeah. um, more interesting that sounds really I'll negative. That, I'll take that thread and I'll run with it because a theme for me recently has been when I, the, the Scrum Masters that I'm coaching, I know they're good. Yeah. They kind of know they're good, but they haven't got the courage to be good. Okay. Why do you think that is? They're worried about the consequences of their actions. So, I, you know we've said before a good scrum master should be prepared to lose their job yeah yeah. to go up against the status quo to challenge things mm. and to say the stuff that nobody else is saying mm. and I think a lot of these people and maybe it's the time of year as well yeah. Christmas carol people don't want to lose their jobs at Christmas time yeah yeah um, but yeah I've kept, a lot of people I'm coaching they've sort of gone back into their shell a bit and they don't realise they have but they know something's not right yeah so I'd be writing for more courage for these people because yeah. when they do get that courage and they do do something I've known very 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 few scrum masters who've actually lost their jobs for doing the right thing yeah and yeah. that fear is there and that I gives me that gives me a buzz so yeah I, I, I'm not being all altruistic here yeah. and saying I want courage for them I, I, I like to see that but you think and I don't want to get into politics now on this because this is not a form but. of politics but, but I think at the moment in this country there is a lot of uncertainty around us you know, in, in, in all walks of life yeah. so I think maybe that does have a rub off on people that you know you don't want to yeah. be awkward you don't you don't want to upset people for fear of you know what might happen or what, what might and yet you could say some of the politics that's going on is actually about speaking their version of the truth that they know is going to be unpopular yeah almost provocative but I don't I feel that at all I feel a lot of politicians are offering fake certitude fake certainty they're saying you are uncertain you are unsure but do not worry but I have all the answers the answers are simple they're clear unfortunately I find probably both sides are wrong yeah Um, so what I would like for Christmas is for people to embrace uncertainty to actually take it on and say you know what it's a gift not a curse and not knowing all the answers as a scrum master, what a wonderful opportunity to learn, to experiment. Not knowing all the answers of business, mm. what a great opportunity to try new ideas, to try new directions, mm. and not wish for the faux certainty of the um, agile guru who knows it all, or the senior leader who claims they've got a method that fixes yeah. all the issues when it doesn't really. It's just, uh, just oh, stop. Reconnect. So my speech is lost. It's still recorded. 
No. So, um, so what I'm going to do is for the recording is when the camera comes back on, I'm going to say the magic words, and that's the way we solve the problems <laughs> of the world. And, and and the guys watching the video will never know. Yeah. So, was, oh my God! Imagine you just solved it. I solved it. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. the plan. So only you listeners will get that joke. Um, if it ever works. Got 12 minutes. All right. There we go. And that's how you solve the problems of the world. <laughs> that, I mean, I can't believe you've waited till now. I know. To come up with that. I, I, do you know if what? If you could bottle that and sell it, you'd be a millionaire. Well, I, 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 I kind of think we could talk about it again. It's so sensitive. No, it's gone lost in the moment. Isn't lost it? in the moment. It's yeah, gone. Yeah. It's the moment's gone. But I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, it's been lost in the moment. Yeah. Oh, dear. Technology, oh, eh? Yeah. That's what I want. It's more reliable for well, yeah. yeah, we'll do that. Yes, what we would like is more reliable for... <laughs> oh, it's gone again. What we would like... No, let's do it for the video. Uh, audio people. What we would like is more uh, stable technology to allow us to communicate to the world. Yeah. I find it absolutely incredible that we're in the middle of the second biggest city yeah. in the UK. And we can't right, stream. I blame BT. That's all I blame. I blame. It's all BT's fault. Um, Gonna get nationalised. <laughs> <laughs> That's a marriage made in heaven, isn't it? I joked about that before. We just imagine like the government thinking, "Aha! We finally got our hands on a wonderful technology of the BT phone infrastructure." Do you reckon? Oh no, it's not. It's not really for me. Um, Say it. My note is about whether if you were if BT was to be nationalised, would they get BT Sport as well? Just going to film. Would they get BT, BT Sport? Sport is, BT Sport is the yeah. very different. No, it would be open reach. It'd just be open reach. It's open reach. Yeah. It's just so the, it's not BT at all. It's open reach. It's BT should, retail will stick on top. It's just the vans it in the street, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 It so it's the vans and the and the wire. Yeah. BT don't want it. BT do want it, but because it's actually one of the profitable bits, but. Uh, uh, you're right, it probably should be a governmental department. And then BT when its services on top. Yeah. So we had, just to recap, we had... It's not working want, okay. Let's go, keep going. You had, you wanted more um, more courageous people, scrum masters. Yeah. I wanted just a decent scrum master. And you wanted... Un- the gift of uncertainty. Gift of I, uncertainty. I take it as a gift, not as a curse. Well, I, think, so, so I think they're all related. So if people can embrace uncertainty yeah. they will feel more courageous and then they will therefore be better scrum better. masters yeah um, and uh, it's it's nice you know I get to work with these people and we get to work through where their fear is and their concerns are and actually they can realise that they're a lot more empowered than, than they think they are they have a lot more ability to act than, they, than they're thinking about yeah. fear we overblow fear yeah. you can imagine far worse things that actually happen yeah. you know your imagination takes you far. Well, for me, for this week, I did a Scrum Master course, um, a, a public course, and I thought everyone was quite good. I thought everyone was quite quite a high level of standard, of intellect, of understanding, of yeah. delivery, and I really liked having those conversations with them. Um, my only trouble was I didn't have enough time with them. I just felt that, you know, I could have done another couple of days there easily. Some of the topics that were raised, I felt, were two days on their own. You know, two-day topic on their own. I yeah. felt like, oh, wow, we could jump into that. There's so much about that we can really have some good chats about it but you've only got two days you have to say and put it to one side and move on and I was sad about that you know yeah. things about organisational structure uh, management um, performance reviews all stuff that I would love to get deep into and really dig into that we just couldn't do in the actual event which uh, made me a bit yeah. sad I, I, I'm doing that at the moment it's, it's, it's fun it's not fun it's, it's more fun for me than it is for them because they're living it but, um, yeah. And that for me was one of the most frustrating things about the course I did this week was I was saying to you on the train yeah. on the way up, I just I got nothing I was getting nothing back. Wait, wait, let's just confirm this is the course you were doing for Jeff, not for me. <laughs> the course you were doing for me was a really good course, wasn't it? So just that the client I was doing this week. Yeah. So, so just getting very little back in terms of their problems or trying to engage in two days you are right you do you yeah. have a limited time yeah, yeah. and there is a certain agenda to get through but those courses for me are much more interesting when people actually want to get to grips with their problems and, and talk about how can this content help you deal with them and how, yeah. how can I help you deal with those, yeah. those problems so yeah I was just um, I love, love a bit more of that yeah yeah so I did less training this year than last year and I intend to do less training next year than this year and of course, that go. is a answer. But what was the question? Why? What do you want? Is that what you want for Christmas? Less training? No, no, I 
don't want it because that's within my control. Um, but we've all asked for something for others. Okay. What about personally? Us, for me. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to. Again, I'd like to. Personally, I'd like to re. See some different. See something different. Do some different things. I, I probably said this some like, thing last year. I'm not acting on it, but trying to. I don't know. Just engage in different activities. Well, that, bring something else to my job. Well, that's the thing, right? Go into the same. Same same things in retrospectives. Mm, so if yeah. you said the same thing last year. And I haven't acted on it. it. Yeah. Why is this? Why is next year yeah. going to be different? No, yeah, sure. What are you going to do about it? Mm. But is it, it's a time, isn't it, where you kind of... No, that's not actually a question. What? What, what, are you do about what am I going to do about it? Um, well, I'm, I'm going to book on some stuff. I'm going to do some stuff personal development-wise. I'm going to do my, my refereeing course next year. Yeah. I've, booked, I've booked on that. But oh, it's got nothing to do with Agile, but it's got a lot to do with yeah. doing... I did a, uh, a referees course... Last month, for refereeing for, for, kid, yeah. for the kids' age yeah. group. I'm going to go on with Karen and do the adult one. Is refereeing adults different to refereeing kids? Yeah. Which is more enjoyable? Um, for me personally? Yeah. Probably adults, I think. Just because, I don't know, I don't know why. Can I stand there to play? Yeah, and just. Um, they listen? <laughs> maybe. You don't have to explain what stuff. Yeah. yeah, and it's just I think maybe it's saying more about me. This is getting quite deep now, but I, I enjoy that level of respect that you get back from players as a referee. Yeah. And r- rugby is a sport that's built around respect. So, so you can tell big, big hulking gorillas, yeah. and, and they won't stand back and like yes sir, yes sir, and they yes, won't sir. punch me in the face. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. So I, I, get, I did get quite a lot out of that last year, and I think I've, I've been holding off doing that. And I think I'm. Well, I've booked onto a course next year as well, so I'm going to do more of that. So I've got macro and micro things. Okay. So macro would be sort of, um, I've been quite enjoying this year, uh, by, more by accident than by design, um, doing Scrum in non-software context. And I mean real product development context, but no software. Making real physical objects with Scrum. Mm-hmm. And I found that incredibly hard and incredibly interesting. And I'd like to do a bit more of that if I get the chance. Okay. So I'm finding that quite fascinating, learning about the mechanics of making things that are not software. Uh, so I've enjoyed that. So as a macro thing, I'd like to do more of that. As a micro thing, I've got the most silliest little minor thing that I'm thoroughly enjoying. I've got a shelf in my office, and I've decided to fill it with um, uh, sort of knickknacks or symbols or action figures of uh, things that I liked from my childhood. Okay. And so I've been loving just picking up gradually over the well, travelling around little like toys or figures representing certain things from my childhood because they've all become very trendy and collectible these days. So on my shelf I've got um, He-Man on the shelf, and I've got Donatello the 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 turtle, the turtle. Yeah. and I've got uh, Boba Fett from Star Wars, mm-hmm. and I'm quite enjoying them, having them the one little represent of each person. So I've got do a few ideas. Sketches? Um, no, I'm not a child. Um, <laughs> my daughters do steal them yeah. and then put them in, like, they have, like, Skeletor um, in bed or having tea with He-Man, <laughs> which I regard as being a slightly controversial because Skeletor and He-Man have never traditionally got on. Yeah, they've but solved that problem, though. Completely. They've put um, them in charge in the middle Exactly, East. I think Skeletor's the mum, I think, considering. Have you um, seen Grumpy Skeletor on Twitter? Very, I've seen yeah, some of that, fun, yeah, yeah. Very funny Twitter. And so, so what for me, yeah. I'm enjoying is I do all this, like, helping people transform the world of work but build your collection of yeah my, my, my I'm building I'm transforming just just little things symbolising I've got, I've, got, I've got two transformers on the shelf Optimus Prime and Megatron so those are two up there so I'm just trying to get like one of so each you've got, thing you've got so the good and the evil the yeah, well, I kept them quite far apart. Yeah. But the idea is, I want to have like a little shelf. Yeah, I want to have a little shelf of some of these heroes, mm. like or some of these characters. I got Roland Matt on the shelf. He doesn't so have a nemesis, does he? I don't remember. Did he have a nemesis? I don't think so. I don't think so. Beyond ratings. Yeah. Uh, but the idea is, I'm going to have this little shelf of these little characters. Yeah, these little characters of my childhood, Roland and I can't do it. Nickname for, for my, babe, my youngest when he was in the womb. We called him Roland Matt. Why? Oh. I don't know why? I can't remember now. So why no, didn't you christen him Roland? Because it's not a nice name. Uh, Sorry, Rolands. Sorry, Rolands. <laughs> yeah. um, Hello to all our Rolands out I there. I don't have a choice over names. It's sort of I- interestingly, um, for my birthday last week, uh, I Happy got birthday, thank, you, thank you. 
uh, my wife gave me a rugby shirt, which was the colours of Roller Mat shirt. And so I was like, oh, Roller Mat. She's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I had to show it to her, the little dolly, a little um, toy from my childhood. So, um, so, but that's, that's giving me a little bit of pleasure. Actually, genuinely, I'm not... Have you always I, been a collector? I collect everything, so... Um, from a young age? Yeah, you oh, well, I've, so I've, I've still got... It's a massive outing. I've still got all my childhood possessions. <laughs> and all of them ever? All of it. I don't throw anything away. So childhood-wise. So I've got all my original Star Wars toys, um, Action Force, He-Man, Action Man, all of it. Kept all of it. Um, I never kept it in good condition, but it made it that scratch and itch. Um, so I quite enjoy that. Um, so I collected, um, again, all the original Star Wars stuff and all that as toys as an adult. I I wouldn't collect. I play. I used to play with a lot of toys. I was, I was given a lot of toys, which I didn't. My mum, largely not me. My mum never threw away. Mm. Which so is you, you never really. Collect, you weren't a collector and stuff. I wasn't as a child, but I, I amassed. I hoarded as a child. I'm quite nostalgic. I'm, I'm a collector now. Yeah, I'm very. I nostalgic. like looking at old toys, yeah. but I wouldn't say I collect. What's them. the thing behind collecting? What's the psychology of it? So well, I can see what happened to me. So I collected. So in the I had my original toys, which I loved as a child, and I played with them. Then, at the age of about my teens, my late teens, um, Star Wars collecting became fashionable, like in the 90s. And so I would go around boot sales and try and get the full set. Uh, why? Just because I wanted them as a child. As an adult, I've done the same thing again. What I've done this time was, what got me into the collecting bug was there was a toy shop, I remember this before, there was a toy shop in northern UK somewhere where the owner had died in like uh, 2005 and the doors were shut for like 10 years on this toy shop and eventually they opened it up to sell off the stock but this person had owned the shop since the 30s so he had in his warehouse original 1970s, 60s, 80s toys untouched and they got auctioned and I saw an article in the newspaper about this on the on the website yeah but this is my, like, your dream as a child discovering a shop with all these yeah, toys yeah, yeah. so I thought I'll bid at auction for a couple of these things and I bid for a couple of things but I'm of the collecting mentality so that started off uh, an itch so I thought okay I've got a couple I'll find a couple more yeah. I won't get the expensive ones I'll find a couple and I go on and on until I got it all <laughs> and I couldn't once there was a gap I had to fulfil that gap so I'm a, I'm a collector like that I have to fulfil I'm not sure I wanted it I just wanted to finish it you know finish the job but as a collector, is it something that you get joy out of showing to other people that, that are interested or the joy that you get personally yourself from looking at them and seeing them? I don't think it's either. I think the joy of collecting is the act of collecting, not it. collection. So no, not so the minute I... Yeah, 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 so I had, to com- no, I had to complete it, but the a, but it wasn't the things, it was the completion, the closing of the task, mm. you know? the act uh, It's an activity you have to go on to achieve all these things. So I was wondering whether there's any psychology here that could be useful to other children. Well, I think it's about closure. It's about closure. Yeah, it's, about having, it. it's like sprint goals. I've heard rumours that sprint goals may become an artefact in the next uh, Scrum Guide, an actual physical thing you have to create. And I'm a great believer in goals because they give an arc to your life, a journey to your life, closure that you can aim for. Two, and, two week arc. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, with the collection, I had closure. I, I went for it, I tried for it, I, I, grad, I implemented it, I did it, could, they couldn't afford that much money, so I did it gradually over many months, gradually building up till I got closure, and that made me feel quite good about some it. some collection though, surely the arc, I get the arc idea, I agree with you, we were like stamp collecting, Yeah, that, there's no end to that no, arc. And that's the, I think that's the problem with some types of collecting, I think collecting works far more if there's when, a set, it's a, it's a, yeah, defined set. Yeah, it's a fine set. So I, I would collect the Panini stickers. Yes, yes because there, yeah. was a, there was an end to yeah, this. Yeah, the World yeah, Cup. So yeah. would you? Would you? Would it annoy you if you didn't get the whole set? Would you? Would you carry no. on? It wouldn't annoy you. No. I never got the whole set. Of no, I didn't. No, no. I did. I, I think that's designed, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, of course. So yeah. you'd have to send off. Yeah. For the last few and pay a ridiculous amount. And my, but you would see on Facebook parents saying, "Oh, yeah. we're looking for these four stickers yeah. for this book." You yeah. know, my wife tr- added it up. So from the latest last World Cup, it added up the amount of money you'd have to spend. I think it's like yeah. four hundred pounds to buy, and that's assuming you've got all the stickers for every pack well, without well, swaps. Well, I remember my brother um, back in the nineties when Bino and Dandy had yeah. Panini things, yeah. and I would like collect a few. And my brother, who was like ten years older than me would send me to the shop with three or four pounds and that would buy an entire box of the stickers would, yeah. and I'll take it home and he'd put them in the, his book yeah, it, yeah and I was like astounded that someone buy an entire box of stickers uh, that's what you've got to do that for me I'm not saying it's cheating 
Yeah. But that, that doesn't, that doesn't scratch, that wouldn't scratch my itch. No. Because to me, I, I'd like the idea that I got a couple of packs every week. Yeah, yeah, so same I for me. I would, I would actually run out of time. Yeah. Because I would be going at slew, too yeah. slow a pace. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, and but also, but you surely if you buy a pack of twenty, you lose in, you lose interest halfway yeah. through. So, uh, it loses uh, the pleasure. Yeah. It's like the clo- there's no closure. It's just like grind. And again, talking back to what we do in life, I worry with some agile implementations they grind. There's no art to yeah. them. It's like open a pack, open a pack, there's open so a pack. It's work in progress in a Panini album, though, isn't it? But when you finish a team, oh, it feels good. Like yeah, a, a, a two-page or, or, spread. Or you get all the foils, all the foil yeah. stickers to the book. Oh, that sense, feels good. Yeah. All different ways of looking at closure. I no, think, you're right. In so in t- just in terms of transformation, yeah. take it back to an agile yeah. context here, is that just, open, I say, opening, running training courses as an example. Yeah. Run yeah. another course, run another course, run another yeah. course. Train everyone in the scrum. Yeah. Keep training, keep training. Train, 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 train. No one's getting any, no one's seeing any journey with that. Yeah. No one's seeing... Yeah. The, the, the narrative of the company changing. Yeah. You're not building a team, you're just no. opening the packets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, ref- nice yeah. metaphor. Yeah, yeah. What about you? We haven't come to you yet. We've got, we're running out of time, but we, so Are put we? you on the spot. Personal goals or wish lists for next year? Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I don't start off another crazy project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you've still got to film for this team master, haven't yeah. you? You've got a project hiatus next year. Mm. You haven't a t- but a t- most of my work in it is done. Oh, okay, I've got a book for you. Your fourth book for everyone. This Space. Is my, I've already, this is my fifth book. Fifth book. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't count co-authoring. That's like you know, um, uh, fifth book. Space mastery. Okay. So mastering the ability not to write a book. <laughs> so you're sort of a blank book. Yeah, at the yeah, end yeah. Of the year. Learning so how to take time for yourself. Yeah. How to give yourself space, time, and thought. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm taking a bit of time off next year. Do you feel you've been you pushed yourself hard this year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've pushed myself hard. Yeah. So what's your next book on? I don't know. I yeah, to win a quiz show. Yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. How not to win a quiz show? <laughs> I'd be good at that bit. No, I, I, I've, um, I haven't fell out of love with writing. I just, I, I kind of feel, I don't know, it took a lot out of me. And that was, that's what you wanted to write yeah. about? Yeah. 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 I say some people have got one book in them. Yeah, yeah and I, it was a sub- subject I was particularly passionate about and I've, I've done that and I've enjoyed the process of doing it. And I don't know if... I don't know if I'll do it again. I mean, what about you? You've always said I wrote a right. book, didn't I? Remember, I never published Where it. Where is it? So, oh. It's out on my hard drive deep somewhere. Talk about I gave collecting. Jeff a copy, he never gave me feedback. <laughs> um, probably put it in his book, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't I, you haven't read it? Yeah, I read it. It's fine. Uh, I don't know. I would like to, but it's fine to be compelling. Because you've got so many stories and so much. Yeah, so much. But it's a potpourri, isn't it? Like When I did the book, the reason why I never published it was I felt it was a semi-random collection of ideas you know more than something cohesive mm. Tobias yeah. did that he published a book collection of essays and thoughts and things uh, okay well maybe yeah yeah so um, a lot of the ideas were good I think when I wrote it I thought these ideas were a bit controversial turns out they weren't controversial they were quite good yeah which is nice now but at the time I wasn't that person to put that out there I didn't have much evidence for it you didn't have the courage yeah well the more I didn't have the evidence so it's courage it's courage is uh is uh, taking the risk but also there's an aspect of jumping off a cliff yes that shows you have courage it also shows you're stupid because there's a big old drop I, at the bottom I've just always I've known you quite, for uh, quite a long uh, time I imagine that process would be quite cathartic for you, you you'd quite yeah. like to get your thoughts yeah, down yeah. I, I enjoyed writing the book yeah. at the time I enjoyed that it was very good but what I just need to do is come back with that compelling thing you know that one I want like an arc a vision uh, the Panini album not the yeah, not the, not the uh, stickers, not the stickers. Mm. and it's just finding that really mm. I could do Scrum Mastery 2 yeah, yeah. you could rip it off it would be that would be one of my major things I would do the wonderful Nigel Sky you've got the correct because yeah. I think yeah. you could even you could yeah. potentially yeah. due to because of your yeah. storytelling yeah. nature you could write a, a work of fiction a novel a business novel yeah. yeah I think you'd enjoy that as well that'd be interesting yeah yeah so there we are. I think. Are you You'll see. No, see. The, the reason why I didn't want to say it on public in a podcast <laughs> was I'm pretty sure I've got a novel in me, but yeah. I don't think I'm an adult. Uh, well, I quite enjoy telling a story, yeah. Yeah. writing a story. Yeah. Maybe well, well, that will be my well, next. Well, book. I'll say now. I will. I, okay, I'll say on the podcast. Everyone, I will write a novel. Will you? Yeah, not now, but I will have write a novel. Have you started to write one? No. You've got some ideas behind yeah. something, have you? I will write a novel. Good for you, mate. So, Science fiction. 
So? Science fiction. No. No. I think you'd enjoy yeah. that. I no. think you'd actually be quite good at it. But, um, but that's something for me, that's something for me to look forward to. Yeah. That's the first I want to do something on Agile, put something narrow down on paper. Um, but just find the time and the effort and the, yeah. It's all coming together. I did quite a lot of essays online on LinkedIn, if you remember last year. I did six, and that was like 15,000 words or yeah. something ridiculous like that. There's a lot of la- a lot of words out there. I'm just doing something with that and getting that into a, I'm feeling my way gradually into ideas and a shape. Um, but it's requiring experiments. So any time I do a conference, I think I move it on a notch, you know, move my ideas on a notch. Mm. Say, okay, this is where they're going. It's quite interesting. So it's all best, coming. It's all coming. Best, um, oh, it's good. We best wrap this up for now. So what we might do, no promises, but we try. We might try and add a few more bits of colour podcast material later on as the day unfolds. <laughs> Jeff's got a day full of organised fun for us. Yeah. He's organised it all. We will yeah. have fun. We will. You, we will. you It's are... timetabled very heavily, so have you noticed that? <laughs> There's very little, like, we've got to get these stories out. There's no, like, yeah, you yeah. know... No, but we're very grateful to Jeff for organising today. We're going to keep you updated on what we're up to, and you might hear from us a bit later on. All right. Thank you. Cheers for now. Cheers. Cheers. Ta-ra. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that last episode of the year. We certainly had a good time. And if you want to see a little bit more about what happened that evening, including the presents that we all got for one another, then my last plug will be head on over to patreon.com slash the Agile Pubcast, where you can see an extra video. We wish you all a very Merry Christmas, and we will be back again in the new year. Cheers, everybody.